a north wharf. A performance going on at the north north wharf? Hmm. This notice is so vague. It doesn't say what the show is or who's gonna perform it. Is this the one for Yunjin? I won't wonder where the location is, but if we can't find it, we could always ask people on the street. Well, I mean, they said the North Wharf. We are here. There's a lot of people over there. Oh, yeah. Ah, Paimon also sees it. Wow, whoa. So many people are gathered there. Maybe just for show, just for the show. Well, let's ask around. Jing Jing. Fortune and health, peace and wealth. Hello. Or maybe it's fortune and health, peace and wealth. Is there going to be a performance here soon? Yes, it's going to be a paper play. Are you guys here for it too? Oh, so this opera is called paper play? No, paper plays and Liyue operas are not the same thing. Ching Ching, the show's about to begin. Be quiet or you'll affect the performance. That's what I like to see. No interrupting. Sorry. As for the paper play, you'll know it when you see it. I'm sure we will. Honored guests, we will be performing Bravebeard today. today. Before the show, if you want to head to the restroom or grab a beverage, now is a good time. We wait for no one when the show begins. Ooh, Paimon, you want to go get some food? So this performance is actually called Bravebeard, but Paimon has never heard of this story. Well, I mean, you haven't heard of most stories, probably. Shh! We can still hear you even at a whisper. Keep it down. You can talk during intermission selection. Yeah. Paimon. Uh, sorry. Intermission selection? The story of Bravebeard is quite long. In fact, it would be too long to do it all in one go. So Yingong has, will uh, let the audience pick which scene they want to see during an intermission. Oh? Ching Xing, I'm trying to listen to the play. Is it ongoing right now? Oh, I won't butt in anymore, I promise. So, dear guests, what part of the Bravebeard's story would you like to see today? Would you like to see Mountain Bound? Or Worshipping Adepti? Maybe exercising demons? Or ascension? As long as you can name it, I can perform it. I want to see Bravebeard fight monsters. He's so handsome and wins every time. You've seen worshipping Adepti and exercising demons so many times already. Haven't you already gotten tired of it? No. As a former child myself, I know that when you're that young, you can watch the thing you like. Just... Dozens upon dozens of time in quick succession and not get bored of it. Actually kind of crazy. Haven't you got tired of it? I want to see the part where the Bravebeard goes home to see his sister. The Bravebeard has a sister? How have I not heard of this? I definitely haven't seen that before. It's probably because you only watch the same parts every time. How impressive. Not many, pe not many people would request homecoming. After all, only the real fans know about it. <laughs> all right. Just in time for Lantern Right, we will not perform the plots featuring monsters. We shall spin a tale of how lovers end up together. There are three characters who shall appear in this scene. Aside from our Bravebeard, with whom you are familiar, of course, there is also a lonely girl named Yibing and an honest gentleman named Nonfang. Understand any of this, Alice? Paimon is Paimon's still confused. Imagine that's because we haven't, you know, gotten any of the other parts. Seems we're getting the end of the story. So this is a story about a guy called the Bravebeard, right? It seems like there's a lot of supporting characters as well. It's always hard to jump into a story in the middle of it. But so far, there's only one performer on stage, uh, and there's a folding screen. How's it going to work? It's a paper plate, Paimon. Hey, someone over... Er... Wait, who's hushing again? 
Was it him or was it him? Hey, someone here has uh, never seen a paper play before. No, he is Yingong. Yeah? Someone in the back asked how I, a lone performer, can be in different places at once and make this performance work. Well, our paper plays may not be as exquisite as Leo operas, but we certainly have our own distinctive flavors. As you may know, the key characters in Leo operas are portrayed by real people in the flesh. The actors in our performances, however, are portrayed with paper figures pasted on silk. Yeah. And Leo opera takes place on a large wooden stage. The stage for our performances, however, is but a paper screen on a wooden shelf. Our actors and stages are all made of paper. That's why we call it a paper play. Yep. I am the narrator, but I am no actor. You will meet the three paper actors in just a moment. Yingang, I don't think they know about the Bravebeard either. Would it be okay if you introduced them to this to a story? You know, the one you always start with. I greatly appreciate that, Hesheng. That's called the establishing moment. I've always enjoyed that too. Please perform it for us, Yingang. Establishing, establishing moment, establishing moment. <laughs> They're all adorable. It is said that the sky's the limit, but the woes of the world are also limitless. There once was a man named Huang Gong, Huang Wang, suffering from human injustice. Is this going to become the brave beard? Who resorted to dwelling amongst the mountains and rivers. By chance, he became a disciple of an adeptus, changed his appearance, and grew a black beard. Oh, it's a story about Blackbeard. Thus, he is known as the Brave Beard. At the behest of the adeptus, he struck down monsters and scared off demons with his sword. The Brave Beard trained for many years and finally acquired the philosophy of the adeptus. Right before he returned to the adeptal abode, he was summoned to recall the past. It turned out that he still had an attachment to the common folk's society, for he had a sister at home. Poor sister Yi Bing was now alone and helpless. Aw, that's sad. She thought her brother had lived a miserable life, never imagined that he would return home. As to what happened next, I shall now I shall show you right away. <laughs> Okay, so everything, all the different stories take place after that, then. Fair enough. Man, they're gonna get tired, aren't they? Hey, don't just stand there. Clap. Clap along. Clap, 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 clap. Is there a rule about how or when we should clap? Uh, okay. Now you just need to be energetic. Thank you all. We are supposed to continue the show, but I can tell that these two guests are still a little perplexed. I mean, don't mind us. I don't want to get in the way. I think it would be better to ask if I ask these two uh, to volunteer from the audience by coming, f coming forward and assisting me in directing the scene. Are you sure about that? I'm not so, uh, I don't want to ruin things for the other guests. It will give you both a good look, and it will help the actors move forward on their stage. On the stage, what do you think? Hey, why didn't you invite me? I know all about paper plays. You gotta remember to invite me. You just gotta. You've been up there too many times already. Quit making a fuss and enjoy the show. That's fine by me. Help direct scenes. Help direct the scene. That sounds so novel. It's also fine by Paimon. And I shall ask you two to prepare. As soon as you two are in possession, position, performance will begin. Wonderful. And so the quest is completed. And... Festival anecdotes. That was paper theater. Unfortunately, Yunjin is not actually involved. That is incredibly disappointing. Wonderful. So we get uh, 
obviously Prima Gems, but then, uh, is this, yeah, Festive Fever for the other, what is presumably that event shop. And of course, Mora and Guides, one of each type. So that's the homecoming scene. Hero across the mountain. I imagine we'd have to do this, then get this one, then we get this one, then we get this one. Oh, but these don't unlock yet. Fair enough, fair enough. Before we do those, we should probably unlock the other events as well. Oh, wait, no. This is about the actual quest line. Fair enough. I wonder if there'll be further parts after part two. I imagine so. Here's the event shop. What is that? Between the exquisite throws of her enigmatic dice. Standard. Oh, it's a firework. Well, that's cool. I wonder if this is only for this event or if this is for your abode. When Festive fe uh, Fever reaches 800, you'll have the opportunity to invite a character to join your party. I mean, the obvious choice is Yao Yao, since I can't really take part in her banner without risking getting uh, using up my guarantee. I have everyone else here already. Thankfully, I did get Yunjin when I tried. I even got Beto, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I have a Yao Yao is who we're probably going to get. Though it would probably... It wouldn't be a necessarily a bad idea to go, you know, for some of their constellations. But no. Yao Yao. We'll go for Yao Yao. So, okay. Two, four, six, and eight. Different events. Not quite an event shop. It's kind of like one, though. Let's go to Radiant Sparks next. During Lantern Right, yes. Tian, uh, Tian, Tian, of the Adventurer's Guild. Hello, Tian, Tian. I do love the Adventure Guild hats sometimes. Hey, happy Lantern Right, esteemed ones. Us, oh, hi, Mon. Did you hear that? We are the esteemed ones. <laughs> you guys have been having fun? Or you guys have been having fun? How about going on a special adventure with me? Absolute sure. Wow, you called us esteemed ones. Such a great attitude. I know, right? Recent recently, we've been having lots of fun. But why is Paimon getting a strange feeling that we've met before? Hmm. Maybe? I mean, I don't remember every Adventurer's Guild person we've met. Oftentimes they look very similar to each other. The outfits are all the same, for the most part. You guys are extremely diligent adventurers, so I'm sure we've bumped into each other at some point. I mean, we might have. She's not the main adventurer. She's not the branch master. I'm Tian Tian. I usually hang out around Feiyun Slope. Looking to recruit new people into the Adventurer's Guild. Oh. Maybe I ran into you out there, then. Everyone and their cats and dogs passing by have probably heard my voice. <laughs> you do look a bit familiar. Yes. Means my efforts were noticed by you guys. All the more reason for you to experience my masterpiece. Oh? Did you set up, like, a fun little, uh... Game or something? I would love to take part. At this point, of course, we'll lend you... At this point, of course we'll lend you a hand. You can tell us a little bit about your particular... Can you tell us a little bit about your particular adventure? Sure, but I'll cut to the chase. Recently, I came across a new novel at the Wanwen Bookhouse. No, that's not it. Rather, I gathered some new information. Oh? Was it a good book? Do you recommend it? I 
I've noticed that people's expectations for adventure are rising, and activities such as climbing and wind gliding are not as exciting as they used to be. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. In order to get people more, uh, more people to join the Adventurers Guild, we need to come up with more novel and exciting approaches. So I teamed up with a couple of adventurers, recruit a... a no, with a couple of recruiters, pulled together our resources, consulted a few expert mountain climbers and firework, uh, fireworks craftsmen, and designed a new uh, racing challenge. Oh, racing challenges are always fun. There are many mechanisms laid out in the challenge. Just step on them and use the momentum from the fireworks and gunpowder blasts to accelerate into the sky. This actually sounds quite fun. Fireworks? Gunpowder? So for that challenge, you want to blast people into the sky? I think she does. Firework flying Paimon. Rocket propelled Paimon. Why are you so excited? You're also going up. Yes, but I think it sounds like fun. Although with your strength, an explosive barrel bursting in front of you wouldn't phase you. But who knows? It might just blow. It might it just might blow you away. Don't worry. That's why I'm putting you in first. You're my test dummy. Not to worry. The explosion is contained inside a tough device. I've taken the necessary precautions to make sure it's safe and injury free. I'm glad to hear. I'll still let Paimon test it first, though. I've also filled, filed a patent with the Ministry of Civil Affairs and have publicized this event many times. Please do not steal my idea. Fair enough, fair enough. Was this the Yalon uh, background one? There's so many hurdles. Now, I'm pretty sure this was the uh, Yao Yao. You've really put a lot of- There are so many hurdles, you've really put a lot of thought into this. As far as I can tell, just doing this racing challenge will stir the spirit of adventure even in an average passerby. Esteemed ones, your reputation precedes you. If you guys take point on this racing challenge, you'll be sure to attract a lot of people. Sounds like a plan, especially if you're offering Primo Gems. I have also prepared uh, great rewards for the challenge. They'll be sure to encourage more people to people to join the Adventurers Guild. Alrighty then. Okay, fireworks and gunpowder race. Let's go. No. Oh boy, time for Paimon and me to get blown sky high. Hey, Paimon sees you laughing. As Tian Tian said it's perfectly safe. Don't you want to give it a try? I do. I want to blow a sky high. Then it's a deal. Without further ado, please give it a whirl. <laughs> there are a lot of tracks for you to try. I bet there are four tracks. Actually, no. The other one had four times three, so maybe there are 12 tracks. I'm sure you'll have a good time with them, and I'll get a couple months worth of results. It's a win-win. Nice. Oh, and there's a little, uh, little Chi-Chi. I want to see the both of them. We'll probably see Chi-Chi in the, uh... Yeah. Oh, wait, this one doesn't have Primo Gems. Boo. Boo. Oh, well. Um, I do hope we get to see Chi-Chi again. She's always precious and adorable. Yeah, it'll be Yao Yao, Chi Chi, and Klee are so far the three most adorable. And there should be a fourth for the small squad that's just as adorable. I'd prefer to avoid filling that slot in with like Diona. She's not on the same adorable threshold for the other three. Oh! Oh, oh, Nahida. Nahida would go well. She is absolutely on par for adorableness. All right. Zhao Jin. Oh, we over at the end of the bridge. I hope the puppies don't get scared during the fireworks. 
They are always so precious. I really hope they implement the ability to pet them someday. I would actually maybe pay money to unlock that feature. Hello, Zhao Chen. No. That feature probably should just come standard in all games that involve dogs and cats. So probably shouldn't encourage them. I'm not sure I'd be able to resist, though. Did this, did this area get cleared? Huh. I think I should have cleared... Uh, I think it should have cleared already. Ugh. What a headache. Humph. You were... The Traveler. My apologies. I was too busy. I didn't even notice you. You seem to be lost in thought. What are you so busy with? Ahem. So... It's like this. For this year's Lantern Rite Festival, we of the Leowa Harbor Adventurers Guild have been dispatched by the Ministry of Civil Affairs to help with some tertiary tasks. Oh... Did Yelan put you up to this? Though she's really only a... I think a single... Part of a single department of the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Oh my god! You see what I mean? They're so precious! The Millilith are primarily responsible for patrolling the city and other key areas. We, on the other hand, get to go out and clear out some monsters. Along with those good-for-nothing bandits, too. Speaking of which, you're a registered adventurer as well, aren't you? I've heard plenty about your exploits. If you want, you can help us out too. What do you say? Well, isn't it supposed to be the holidays? Well, since we are helping the ministry during a holiday, you're providing additional compensation for our efforts. Say no more, say no more. You had me at time and a half. So, should any adventurers be willing to take on these commissions, they'll be able to collect more rewards upon completing their tasks. How much additional compensation are we talking? Trust me, it's plenty. I won't trust you. I want at least two and a half. It depends on how much work I still have left. Ha <laughs> ha, all right. I knew you wouldn't just stay idle. I'll be sure to mark down all the locations already confirmed by the guild. Also, please take this miniature launch tube. Oh? Should you accept one of the commissions, remember to launch some fireworks after you clear out an area. Oh, yes! I want to launch fireworks, please. After you launch the fireworks, we will send someone to designate the area as cleared. And then we will adjust the overall plan in accordance with the areas that have already been cleared. Pretty strategic. Yeah, this is the Lantern Rite Festival, after all. We can't let anything go wrong. People are more tense than a stretched cord right now. Well, at least the people running it are. Hopefully that results in uh, the people enjoying the festivities feeling nice and relaxed. Never mind this for now. I'll go take a look at the situation. Need to make a report to Lon later. Yeah, she was the branch master. <laughs> See, this is the way to do it. The course runner could take note. I like it. So that's uh, 60, 20, so 240. Plus, I think from the other one, it'll be 480. Plus then the other one, I think it was 30 each. So that'll be another 120. Or total of 600 from these smaller events these games knights and aristocrats share the same cultural heritage but the knights had enough sense to do a what are you looking at detail oh uh, what's got your attention what's got your attention huh what do you what, what do you what do your dog oh i see you just you sniff something you sniff something oh yeah oh yeah oh and your friend here who's a good boy or girl I don't... I, I, I doubt I could actually check. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Girl. Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? <gasps> yeah. Alright, let's, uh... We can't distract ourselves forever. 
I believe we need to go to Beto's ship. Yes, I assume it's Beto's ship. Should probably double check that. AC Drake. Time to scout. Little you And there you are. Wishing. Part of Beto's crowd. I don't know if I've ever met you. She's got the one, uh, the hairstyle, though. Uh, actually, no, it's a little different. No. It, it is the hairstyle, I think, that marks uh, any any anime mom to death. Long time no see, Alice and Paimon. Happy Lantern, right? Thank you, Hushing. Hushing? Paimon also wishes you well. Happy Lantern, right? We've seen that out that the Alcor has a lot of seaborne goods and decorations, and it's as bustling as in the city. Oh yeah, are you guys gonna put on a fireworks show? This is the optimal place to launch one from, out in the middle of the harbor. Your ship provides that opportunity. Looking great, no? All of the decorations were handpicked by the captain. She wanted her brothers and sisters on duty to feel like they were at home for the festival. Is she not giving you guys a uh, shore leave? Not only that, before the lantern right, the captain gave each of us a bonus and organized several big feasts. Well, at least she's uh, doing what she can. Nice Paimon shadow. Very detailed. For food and every feast is ordered from reputable restaurants such as the Wanmin restaurant, which we always frequent, and Shinyo Kiosk and Leoli Pavilion. Damn, she is pulling at the stops, as she should if she's not giving you shore leave, so I'm happy to see that. I keep looking back there like Beto's standing over our shoulder, but she isn't. Oh yeah, I think those are all the fireworks over there, maybe. Everyone ate and drank their fill. Well, the festival isn't over, though. Paimon wants to check those out, too. Wow, a bonus and a feast. That's great. Paimon had no idea that Beto had such an eye for detail. She's a very good captain. Actually, the captain has always been meticulously keeping the fleet's affairs in order. Not only do we crew members get paid very well, but during past lantern rites, she's also prepared gifts for our families. That is so nice of her. Before the captain got some business information from Tian Chuan on how to improve management strategy for the crux. Oh. Presumably that I'm well, I guess that could have been her question, but she probably got that information before the quest. The crane quest. The revenue of the fleet has soared, so the captain has also increased our pay. In this way, the crew will be in tip top shape for any challenge. Man, I can see why you guys are so loyal to her. She's a smart leader. I bet it causes an even greater productive output too. Whatever that form that takes for a fleet. When the new recruits hear about how well the Crux fleet treats, it, crew, treats its crew, they'll be extra motivated. New recruits? Eh? During Lantern right? shouldn't everyone be on vacation? You guys seem to be working overtime it's not like that don't worry the captain has done all the research in advance so some of the crew were given early leave while the others were given day days off later on fair enough fair enough gotta stagger your shore leave thus everyone gets time off there will always be someone to man the alcor and beto knows what she's doing all right i was among the group that got earlier vacation time and I came back to my post completely refreshed. I'm currently getting ready for my training examination. Vigilance at sea. Vigilant? What now? Vigilance at sea, Paimon. Seems for new recruits, maybe. A test? Is it to do with the new recruits? Yep, you guessed it. During the past two years, the volume of seaborne trade in Liwa Harbor has been soaring, and many people have joined up as sailors. Taking to the high seas is a matter of patience, bravery, and perception. 
These are highly demanded qualities. Sailors have to be well trained in order to navigate safely. In addition to obtaining the four major qualifications and the five minor qualifications, which total nine navigation related qualifications stipulated by the Civil Ministry of Civil Affairs, two years of maritime training and apprenticeship are also required. Damn. What you're saying is we are not able to join your fleet. Four major, five minor, for a total of nine. And then two years of training and an apprenticeship. Yikes. But it seems like it's probably worth it. For anyone who loves the sea, at least. Nine qualifications and two more years of training? Holy mackerel! Paimon, what are you, from like the 60s era Adam West Batman? Holy mackerel, Batman! <laughs> Jeez. Oh, not even now when we start fighting, I want to hear her start going, Blam! Pow! Kaput! That's so demanding. It's no big deal. After all, it's far better to undergo rigorous training and preparation for work than to go out to sea encountering uh, an unpleasant surprise unprepared. Uh, fair. Anyone untrained and unqualified would end up just getting themselves killed, probably, on the high seas. The Ministry, or worse, getting someone else killed. The Ministry of Civil Affairs organizes most of the training courses. Anyone with passable knowledge of sailing could coast by them. These subjects aren't too difficult. I always call them pirates, but... They're not quite, really. Maybe privateers. You know, legally sanctioned pirates. Of course, some ships also have to traverse dangerous waters, which will hopefully give them some experience. Given the experience of the Crux fleet in dealing with rough sea situations, we and the Ministry of Civil Affairs have organized an intensive navigation training program. Sailors who pass the training will get a Deep na Sea Navigation Qualification Certificate on completion, as well as some pre rewards prepared by the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Do you mind if I take part? I might not be able to, you know, spend two years training, but... Maybe someday. Considering I have the best knowledge of the surrounding waters, the captain has tasked me with pa planning this training examination. Wait a minute. Speaking of sailing, you two are pretty good with that wave rider, no? <gasps> the wave rider? Yes, we are. But this isn't going to be Boatmon, is it? I forget his, what his name was. Was it Meatball? Mitabolu? Do you guys want to give it a try? Only if I can name it Mitabolu too. If you don't mind. I would also like you guys to give some, me some feedback about this test, positive or negative. That way, I'll be able to improve it in a timely manner. Well, Paimon wants to see how much skill the crew needs to navigate the high seas. And there's a bonus reward too. It's a win-win for us. Let's give it a try. Let's experience what it's like to be a sailor. Yo ho ho, a private pirate's life for me. Such vigor. Then I'll break you guys down for the Vigilance at Sea examination. Please do your best. Thank you. Ooh, Vigilance at Sea has both a multiplayer billowing waves mode and a single player tranquil waters mode. You may obtain all rewards by completing challenges in either mode. Vigilance at Sea has three stages. Before each challenge begins, a stage will be chosen randomly. View gameplay details for the rules of the different stages. Hmm. What in the world do those symbols really mean? The wave rider will not be able to use its heavy cannon when the challenge begins. You will gain challenge te uh, random techniques by collecting prop lamps in each stage. I'm gonna have to reread this anyways when we start it, but oh well. Make uh, use of these techniques to smoothly sail through the challenge. During the challenge, the Wave Rider's HP will be replaced by durability. In billing waves mode, 
hell do those symbols really mean? I don't know what symbols you're talking about. Um, in Billing Waves mode, once your Wave Rider's durability is depleted, you will lose all challenge coins and have already you have already gained and enter the Voyage Observer state. Your Wave Rider will not be able to collect any challenge coins or prop lamps in the stage. You will exit the stage after a while and your Wave Rider, wave rider can participate in the challenge again. In Tranquil Waters mode, once your Wave Rider's durability is depleted, the challenge will end and your score will be calculated. The more challenge coins you have at the end of the challenge, the higher your final score will be. Wonderful. I appreciate that we are actually taking place in the taking part in this event from near very much near the beginning. So we can we don't have to rush anything. Ooh. Oh yeah. Look at that. One, two, three, is it nine? It's hard to... Come on, there we go. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, my, 200 primogems. So that puts us at 800 total for these events, I think. Wonderful. But for now, until next time, see you later.